Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the multiple choice section of the 2016 National 5 Chemistry paper. I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part will look at questions 1 to 10 and the second part will look at questions 11 to 20. Here we have question 1. When solid sodium chloride dissolves in water, a solution containing sodium ions and chloride ions is formed. Which of the following equations correctly shows the state symbols for this process? So the first part we're looking for is solid sodium chloride. So we're looking for an S in brackets after the NaCl. So we can score out C. We're dissolving it in water, which is a pure liquid. So we can ignore B as well, where it has water as aqueous. The ions that you'll form will be aqueous ions. So we can ignore A and your answer is then D. Question two. The table shows the times taken for 0.5 grams of magnesium to react completely with acid under different conditions. The time for 0.5 grams of magnesium to react completely with 0.2 moles per litre acid at 25 degrees C will be what? So your 0.2 mole per litre is going to react faster than the 0.1 mole per litre did at 25 degrees C but it's not going to react as fast as the 0 0.2 at 30 degrees C did. So it's going to lie somewhere between these two times. So it will be faster than 60 seconds, but slower than 20. So it will be C between 20 and 60 seconds. Question three, when an atom X of an element in group one reacts to become X plus, what happens? So if we have X, and we go to become X plus, we must have lost an electron. Electrons have very little mass and they are on the um, outside of the nucleus. So there's nothing happening to the nucleus of your atom. So both A and B can be uh, removed and the charge of your nucleus is staying the same. However, the number of occupied energy levels will decrease because you're removing the one outer electron from a group one element. So D is your answer. Question four, which of the following does not contain covalent bonds? So for there to be covalent bonds, it has to be between two non-metals. So sulfur is a non-metal. So if it bonds with itself, it will be covalent. Copper is a metal, so bonds through metallic bonding whereas both oxygen and hydrogen are non-metals, so will contain covalent bonds. Which of the following structures is never found in compounds? So for A, ionic, you need to have a metal and a non-metal. That can only be a compound. For a monatomic, that means that you're existing as one atom. You can't have a compound if you only have one atom, and this is for the noble gases. So B is your answer. A covalent network that could be a compound could be something like silicon dioxide, and covalent molecular substances like water are compounds. Number six, which line in the table shows the properties of an ionic substance? So ionic substances have high melting points, high boiling points, and they conduct electricity uh, when they are in liquid form only. So if we have a look here, we've got low melting and boiling points and no conduction, that's likely to be a covalent molecular substance. Here we have relatively high melting and boiling points, but again, no conduction, that's likely to be a covalent network. Here we have high melting and boiling points, no conduction as a solid, but conduction as a liquid. So this is likely to be our ionic substance. And here you have high melting and boiling points and conducts as both a solid and a liquid. So that could be a metal. What is the name of the compound with the formula Ag2O? So it'd be best to try and draw this out. So you have Ag and you have two of them. 
and they're both joined to one oxygen. So you can see that this is silver, if you look up Ag in the data book, and it must have a valency of one, so our answer will be A. Question eight, an element was burned in air. The product was added to water, producing a solution with a pH less than seven. So if you burn an element in air, you're going to get an oxide produced. If your oxide is then soluble, you can either produce an acid or an alkali. With a pH less than seven, that would be an acid and would require a non-metal oxide. So that immediately means that you can ignore all of the metals in the, the options here, which is tin, zinc and sodium, and leaves you with sulphur. Question nine, when methane burns in a plentiful supply of air, the products are what? So if we have methane and we burn it in oxygen, all of the carbon will become carbon dioxide and all of the hydrogen will become water. So your answer here will be B, carbon dioxide and water. Finally, for this video, question 10. Which of the following compounds belongs to the same homologous series as the compound with molecular formula C3H8? C3H8 is of the general formula CnH2n plus 2, so it must be an alkane. Here you have a cycloalkane, so that would be general formula CnH2n. Here you have an alkene, also general formula CnH2n. Here you have an alkane, so this will be your answer. And finally, this one is an alkene. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Stay tuned for part two where I look over questions 11 to 20. And please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye.